Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? And Houston, this is Station. We are ready for the event. Houston, ACR. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston. How do you hear me? And Houston ACR, we have you loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. The New Mexico Museum of Space History in Alamogordo, New Mexico, home of the International Space Hall of Fame. We'd like to thank the folks at NASA for giving us this downlink opportunity, and especially the crew of the International Space Station for taking time out of their extremely busy schedules. We've been working this spring with students from the Alamogordo, Cloudcroft, Hondo, and Ruidoso school districts. And so, without further ado, let's get to their questions. Hi, my name is Tyler, and my question is, how does the Canadarm work? And Tyler, I haven't had that question in a while because uh, the Canadian arm is really amazing, and people don't think about it, but it actually has electric motors, which on Earth could never, ever do the work it does in space. Uh, so it's a very delicate machine. It actually also has seven joints, which is one more joint than you need to put the arm in any configuration you want. So it, it's a pretty amazing piece of machinery. And they, uh, Canada built the original space shuttle arm, they built this arm, and they're building the arm for our next project, the Gateway Outside the Moon. Hello, my name is Gracie Ann, and my question is, what are ways, other than using a treadmill, that you can exercise in space? Hey, Gracie Ann. Well, that's a really good question because exercise is super important to us up here. Uh, so much so that we actually schedule about two hours of exercise time uh, because one of the downsides of being in microgravity is that your bones don't get the pressure that they normally do on Earth from walking and standing and just doing the day-to-day -day stuff that you do. So up here we do a resistance exercise on a machine called ARED, which is a really cool machine that uses uh, vacuum cylinders to create resistance uh, so that we can exercise. We also have a treadmill, like you said, and that's kind of cool because we have to put a harness on and bungee ourselves to the ground so that we get pulled down onto the treadmill so that while it's turning beneath us, we can run. And then we also have a stationary bike that we clip into. Uh, the cool thing about that is that it's missing a seat because in microgravity, you don't need to support your upper body. So you can just pedal while your upper body just kind of flies around and floats around. So it's really cool uh, to be exercising up here and uh, see the way that microgravity affects the things that we do. Hi, my name is Jordan and my question is, what is the most important part about your job? So Jordan, a lot of people don't think about this, but the most important part of our job is the research and exploration and the science and actually the engineering that comes out of this whole uh, project of flying in space. Because what it's really designed to do is make life better on Earth. So right now on board the International Space Station, there's hundreds of experiments going on, some of which we're a part of, some of which we have to tend to, some of which they operate without us. But it's an amazing laboratory and we, everything we do here provides benefit for life on Earth. Hi, my name is Stella. And my question is, if, if an astronaut becomes ill while on the space station, what special protocols or quarantines are put into place to keep the other astronauts safe? Hey, Stella. Yeah, it's really important that we stay healthy up here so that we can do all the work that Steve talked about. Um, not all crews have medical doctors on board, and so all the astronauts go through medical training, uh, and we all get to go work in an emergency room, uh, sometimes in a critical care unit, and learn uh, some medicine so that we can help take care of our crewmates up here. Uh, for those of us that are medical doctors, we can use all that knowledge that we um, got received during our training and during our professional careers and help our crewmates up here. But the good thing is most astronauts are in really good health, and so... Uh, most of the time we don't really get sick. The other cool thing that we do is we go through two weeks of quarantine prior to launching, and that essentially protects us from any acute illnesses before uh, launch, and so it's really unlikely that we'll actually bring any diseases up here. Uh, we do have a really robust medical kit. Uh, this is just one of about 
10 different kits that we have up here that we can use in case of a medical emergency. Uh, we also have some like world-class doctors that are on the ground supporting us. And if anything were to happen, we basically make a phone call and they can help walk us through uh, treating whatever medical emergency shows up up here. But for the most part, we stay pretty healthy and that's the way we like it. Hi, my name is Elliot. And my question is, what is the most interesting feature of Earth you have seen from space? What I find most interesting when, I'm, when viewing Earth from space, other than when we fly over cities we know and places we have uh, family and friends, is the, the clouds. Because clouds have incredible textures and you see layers and layers sometimes of different cloud formations as they cross and as fronts meet each other. And it's, it's really amazing to me to, to watch clouds from space. Hi, my name is Sam. You were on the space station day and night for weeks, so what do you do for fun? <laughs> hey, Sam. Well, Steve says we have no fun, but I disagree. We actually try to have fun quite a bit. Um, you know, just floating around is a lot of fun, and so day to day, we try to do that uh, pretty much nonstop. We'll often have uh, races uh, to get to our next work uh, spot as fast as possible, uh, and we just try to enjoy it up here. But you know what? You're right. We, uh, after a while, um, work can get kind of tedious. And so we do like to spend time together as a crew. We'll have dinner together. Uh, we'll watch movies together on the weekends. Uh, and sometimes just looking out the window can be a lot of fun. And so most of us will spend several minutes, if not hours, uh, every week trying to do that because it's a beautiful uh, view to look out the window. Hi, my name is Emily. And my question is, what is the most interesting thing that has happened to you during your training or while you've been in space? Emily, that's actually a, 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 a very difficult question to answer because every day everything is, is somewhat new. We're, every, our days are different every single day. Some of the tasks we do repeat over and over again. Uh, spacewalks are incredibly amazing to be a part of. Uh, just looking out the window and seeing what's going on is incredible to be a part of. And then if you think about the fact that we've had, well, Frank's had one, two, three, basically almost five docked vehicles come visit including cargo vehicles while he's been here. And those are very large vehicles, and they're meeting us in space, and we're traveling at 17,500 miles an hour. Uh, that's just absolutely amazing. So the whole thing is incredible. You should come up and visit sometime. Hello, my name is Xander. My question is, what experiments do you do in space that you can only do in space that helps humanity most? Hey, Xander. Well, you know, that is the actual uh, entire purpose of the International Space Station is to come up here and do science that hopefully will help humanity back on Earth. Uh, some of the forces that we have here, or lack of forces, such as convection and gravity, uh, allow us to do experiments that you just can't do back on Earth. Uh, some material science, uh, so we'll me melt different metals and see how they respond to a lack of gravity. Uh, we can make crystals that are really perfectly shaped because of that lack of gravity and convection. And uh, those crystalline and protein shapes can then be used to make medicines. And those medicines can uh, perhaps yield uh, much better ways to treat diseases back on Earth. Uh, we also study our own bodies. Uh, we go through a lot of changes up here, some of which mimic um, aging. So like bone degradation, muscle uh, wasting, all those things happen up here because of microgravity, but they happen really fast. And so we can study those changes and see how we can uh, affect them and perhaps get rid of them so that we can help all of humanity back on Earth. Hi, my name is Addison. My question is, why does the spacecraft drop parts whenever it goes into orbit? So Addison, that's a... Uh uh, another question I don't think I've ever had. Actually, we need when we launch off the Earth, we carry a lot of fuel and a lot of weight. So as we spend that fuel, it empties out a portion of the spacecraft. So then we can get rid of that portion of the spacecraft and use the next portion because every single pound that you don't have to take to orbit takes that much less fuel. So it's really important, and they design these spacecraft really carefully to allow us to get off the ground and get motion, and then you get rid of the first stage. 
and then the second stage will light and you'll go even further into space. If you added more stages on some of these vehicles, you could go a very long way. Hi, my name is Manasa, and my question is, how is being an astronaut beneficial? Hey, Manasa. Yeah, you know, we, uh, we hope that what we do up here is really beneficial to all of our friends and family and all of humanity back on Earth. Um, so up here, we come up here and we innovate in a lot of different ways. So we come up with new technologies, new sciences that we can then turn around and use back on Earth. Uh, we explore, and I think exploration is part of uh, just humanity. We love to find new places, new things. And so showing uh, the rest of humanity that, hey, we can go uh, to low Earth orbit. We can go to the moon, and eventually we'll hope to be able to go to Mars. Uh, we hope that all of those things help to inspire uh, not just adults, but especially kids like you guys, so that someday you can do even bigger and better things than what we're doing now, and we can all just sit there in our rocking chairs and say, wow, they're doing really amazing things. Uh, so, yeah, I think all of those things are how we benefit humanity. Hi, I'm Emily, and my question is, do you ever get bored? Emily, I never get bored. I never get bored on Earth. I never get bored up here. It's just, this is an, it's sensory overload. You're never going to be bored up here because if, if you ever get tired of looking at one thing, you look at another. Our schedule changes day to day. What we're doing week to week changes. We just had uh, guests up here from a visiting uh, crew. We have a cargo vehicle coming in another week. We've had vehicles come and go, and then just spending time with my crewmates is just fantastic. So no, no, I never get bored up here. Hi, my name is JD, and my question is, how do you eat warm stuff? Hey, Jaden. Yeah, you know, uh, eating is really important, especially for our psychological health. So we try to bring up lots of yummy food. Uh, most of it, uh, like Steve is showing you here, comes in these two types of different packets. One looks like an MRE, which is a meal ready to eat that the military uses. And uh, the other one comes in little dehydrated uh, packets like this. And uh, we basically hook it up to a little machine that shoots water in there. And both of these packets we can put in a small little hot plate that we have. Uh, we don't really want to have fire up here in, uh, on the space station, so we basically use electricity to warm up a metal plate, and then this uh, gets put up against that plate, and it just gets uh, warmed up there. Uh, we normally try to put that stuff on there maybe an hour or two before we're ready to eat so that it's nice and warm by the time we're uh, ready to have breakfast or lunch or dinner. Hi, my name's Nehemiah. My question is... How did you sign up to be an astronaut? Nehemiah, I think uh, it really comes down to seeing the opportunity and applying. Uh, uh, when, I, when I applied, the Navy put out a message and I followed the directions in the message. I think when Frank applied, it was a, um, a USA Jobs opening or something. They just, and you literally apply. You know, they'll screen uh, the thousands and thousands and thousands of applicants, uh, I think there were 18,000 applicants per year, and they only chose a few people. So uh, it's a uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting selection process, and we get great people, obviously, after my class. I mean, these guys are incredible. And it's uh, uh, you just to follow the directions really comes down to meet the requirements and follow directions. Hi, my name is Dylan, and my question is, uh, why did you decide to be an astronaut? Hey, Dylan. Well, uh, like Steve said, one, there's a lot of amazing people that you get to uh, work with, uh, not just astronauts, but actually people at NASA and now our commercial partners, uh, and all those uh, companies and agencies are just full of really amazing people and they make for really incredible teams. And being on a good team uh, just makes, allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, way, way better and bigger things that you could do individually. Uh, so that's probably the number one thing. Um, it's also a lot of fun getting to launch in a rocket and getting to go up to space and be in microgravity and do spacewalks. Those are all really cool things that I just thought would be uh, pretty incredible to, to do. Uh, and I also just love the idea of doing something uh, new, getting to go explore 
uh, somewhere where few people have been. Uh, so yeah, those were some of the few reasons uh, why I applied. Hi, my name is Jacob, and my question is, when you're floating around in space and you look at Earth, how do you feel? So Jacob, we don't get to continuously look at the Earth while we're floating in space, but when we do, uh, you really just get this amazing sense of awe. You know, it, you're just amazed that uh, not just the fact that you're up here looking down at Earth, but Earth itself is just absolutely amazing. And every time you look at it, night or day, there's um, incredible things to see. Lightning storms at night, cities at night, clouds, uh, dusk and dawn, the continents, the oceans. It's absolutely unbelievable. As always, it's amazing to get a chance to talk to an astronaut actually out in space. So, on behalf of the students of the Alamogordo, Cloudcroft, Hondo, and Ruidoso School Districts, the New Mexico Museum of Space History, and the International Space Hall of Fame, we want to thank NASA and the astronauts on the space station for taking time out of their very busy days. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.